Hello people, my name is Rage, and welcome one and all to the next leg of the Hearthstone tournament. Top on them, top on them. That would be a very different Hearthstone experience. We're not going to talk about that. We'll cut that out. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, these competitors have no idea what awaits them in the final. <laughs> okay, we are going to have the final quarterfinal, I think, now on NA. And that's really all there is to say. We've got some very good competitors left, and we have some real creativity to see, I hope. And it's going to be good. So, without further ado. Let's go to the first game. So here we are, everybody. We have Young Link 90 versus El Nino Hero. And it is Druid versus Shaman. A very nice matchup between two very evenly matched classes. There's not going to be any ridiculous slowness of Control Warrior. Nor there. Well, actually, I was about to say, nor is there going to be any of the ridiculousness of a fast-paced aggro experience, but Young Link, who so far out of ever in the tournament, has brought forth the most interesting, unique decks, is running the aggro version of Shaman. Obviously, it's got Dancing Sword, you don't see that often. Having Doom Hammer with a Rock Biter is nice. However, Coin Innovate into a Yeti on turn one is a fairly strong play by El Nino Hero. Oh, we have the Undertaker, the nerfed Undertaker. Such a needed nerf, my word. But still a very viable card in a Death Rattle based deck. He's going to lose one of his spiders, but he's going to keep one of his spiders. And this is where the first this is where the first interesting decision of the match comes in, because using that Rock Biter on the spider to clear the Yeti is very good value, but at the same time. Saving that Rock Biter for the Doom Hammer is so much damage, and he is actually just going to go for the value play and totem. I personally would have put out the Undertaker just to prepare for the Dancing Sods, because this deck is kind of an all-in deck, really. You either start strong and keep going and going and battering away, or you kind of fizzle out straight away and just kind of die horribly screaming and in pain, and it looks like Young Link is going to be going that way. Already by turn 3, he's very much disadvantaged because of the deck that he's trying to play. The only thing he does have going is that El Nin, your hero, still thinks he's probably playing a more normal version of Shaman, though that will undoubtedly change fairly soon. So down goes the Searing Totem, and the thing is, very soon, El Nino Hero has got Belchers, he's got Drakes, he's got both his double draws, he's even got a Taunt Lucky Spare Part. He honestly has a lot going for him right here, and... I think he would have to struggle to lose. He'd have to start drawing unreal bad, and Young Link would have to start drawing unbelievably well. He is going to put out the Dancing Swords. What sucks about this is the Zombie Chow can kill the Leper Gnome for free, and then even if he gets Earthshock, then you remove the healing. Granted, you don't need the healing, but you kind of need to save this Earthshock for bypassing taunts, so it's still not the best thing. The advantage that Young Link has... Next turn, he can whack on the Doom Hammer, and even without any other buffs drawn, a Doom Hammer is still 16 face damage, and that's a really nice thing. He's actually going to bust out the Rusty Horn on the Zombie Chow, which actually makes it a worthy Earthshock target, just to push the 4 damage of the Dancing Swords through, and I think, honestly, that's the way to go this turn. Get your Undertaker on the field, get your Earthshock, totem up, attack through, and prepare yourself for a following turn. Granted, you could Doom Hammer, hit the zombie yourself, heal up the damage, and then go again to the face, save the Earth Shock for later, but it's whether you value having an Undertaker and the Totem on the board for any future buffs, or even if you've got a sneaky Bloodlust in here, and it's kind of a hard decision to make, because it's, it's the immediately better play versus the potentially way better play in the future, and it's a hard one to call between. However, because of Sludge Belcher from... Uh, Mr. El Nino Hero, he's suddenly very happy to have the Earth Shock as it completely negates it as a thing. He's hoping for a bit of spell power here. He doesn't get it, but the taunt? No, no, no. You just ignore the Belcher. It does nothing. He very luckily gets a high roll there, but the best play, Earth Shock it and just ignore it. Hit face. Make 
the Belcher have to waste its time on a Stoneclaw totem. This is rapidly turning around for our young Link friend as Mr. Nino Hero. He has a lot of good cards, but he's not got anything to immediately stop this. He kind of used his Rusted Horn in a little bit of a weird position, and now because he's still got both Earth Shocks, he's got the Jeeves to refill his hand, Ancient of War's not going to do anything for him. He really needs to start putting up a defensive wall, or he's going to be forced to use the Ancient of Law to heal, and that's really the subpar, less optimum way to use Ancient of Law. I'm liking to see a Shaman do well. I'm always partial to a bit of shaman -y goodness, I have to say. So, I'm not entirely upset by this. He's actually going to trade away the Dancing Swords, which is very interesting to me, and he's going to lay down the Jeeves. But the real deal here... Well, technically speaking, no, he can't even rewind the Stone Claw and play it just to have Jeeves draw him. Kind of is a little bit of a letdown just to put Jeeves on the field for the sake of having Jeeves on the field. But he feels pretty secure having Double Earth Shock to nullify any kind of real threat that would prevent some throughput. Although now he is low on damage, he's got... 5-6 left on the field, and Feral Spirit's not really what he's after. He has no way of actually killing this Ancient of War. He can, of course, disable it and push more damage through, but he really needs it to get rid of it. If I was him, I'd time rewind the Stone Claw Totem and play it just to remove that card from your hand, just to draw more, and he is going to do that. That is nice to see. Just going to push the damage through, save his two Doomhammer charges for if he draws his second Rock Biter, which is what he really needs to bring this game home, and it's a good job he's drawn these two cards for free because two turns of drawing these two as your only cards would pretty much be the nail in the coffin here. He kind of has two Ancient of Lore and Heal. He cannot risk a second Earth Shock or second removal and he is in fact going to do just that with the druid of the claw the advantage of that being of course he gets to wrath but it is also a lot riskier and a lot weaker to uh, more silence granted he's seen one silence so it is actually unlucky he does have to be faced with another and flame tongue is a massive deal here it really really is He's going to Earth Shock away that taunt, and he can uh, really push some damage through here. He can buff the Undertaker up by one with the Haunted Creeper. Not that. In fact, no. What has he done? What has he done? Has he attacked with everything, or am I going crazy here? Did he? Did he actually make the mistake? He made the mistake. He needed to play Haunted Creeper first in order to buff up the Undertaker to 2 damage, so when it attacked it put the Druid to 4, and he could finish him with double Doomhammer charges. That is a horrific misplay there, that is mislethal, and that may come back to haunt him, honestly. A lot of clearance is going to happen now, a lot of his damage is going to get peeled away, and if we see this Ancient of Law heal him up, shot of a miracle rock bike to draw, he may have just thrown away his chances to win that game with a little bit of a maths blooper there. That is, that is, that is just crazy, you know? It's just so crazy. And it's a loot hoarder, not what he wants. I mean, he's got time, he's got the health. You play both loot hoarders, you buff up your Undertaker even more, you lay down the next Feral Spirit. Despite not having a terrific amount of space on your board, you need a little bit of safety net at this point to absorb these higher attack minions that are going to be heading your way. So he does make the decision to play it despite only getting the one wolf. And honestly, I really don't blame him for that. He just needs stuff on the board and it comes with a double advantage of Jeeves powering through your deck, which of course has now resulted in a crackle. So unless the druid can really pull something out the hat here, He's going to be in a little bit of trouble. He actually chooses to go for the Jeeves, which honestly isn't the best target at the moment. You just need sheer damage prevention. The zombie is going to get rid of the buffed Undertaker. He's actually not. He's going to swipe the Jeeves, kill the spiders, kill the loot hoarders. But this Undertaker is going to be a big problem. He's going to use the Keeper of Grove, hopefully, to get rid of it. But it's really not going to be enough. He needs the health up, the crackle, the lightning bolt, the flame tongue, all of which... Well, not the flame tongue anymore, I suppose. But the crackle, the lightning bolt, and the rock biter. As if there were needed another nail in this coffin, the salt in the wound is there. He has so many ways to kill him. 
it is absolutely unreal. Oh, he's not even going to let the BM happen. I love that he was going for it. He was going to use everything. We know he was. <laughs> so 1-0 to Young Link over El Nino Hero. Let us join them in their second game. So here we are, everybody. El Nino Hero behind has actually gone to Rogue. A very weak class right now that's seeing a little bit of a revival, a little bit of a resurgence, even in the Miracle Department, but certainly certainly nowhere near as strong as an overall class as it used to be with a few key nerves on Auctioneer and uh, Leroy so that makes me actually really excited to see what El Nino Hero is doing whereas on the flip side from Young Link we have Arcane Explosion in his mage deck. I mean, really, I don't know how this guy moves around with balls that big. That is absolutely excellent. Oh, Arcane, what, what possessed him? I can't think of a situation in which Arcane Intellect is as good as you need it to be. That is incredible to see. So... The Mana Worm coin mirror image opening is phenomenally strong and unbelievably good, but the Rogue Falnos into a free damage backstab, an absolutely flawless follow-up. So this game is up to a very ferocious start here, both players countering each other very, very nicely. The Deadly Poison is going to make both of these mirror images fall, but the thing is, a Deadly Poison for a mirror image is pretty much in favour of the mage. Deadly Poison is one of the best tools in the Rogue Arsenal, not only does he have what I Arcane Explosion in here, he's got the bloody pair of them! Oh my god, I am, I'm excited. I like Young Link's decks, that is the one thing I will say. He has some things going for him in that department. So down goes the final mirror image. It's, you know, they're annoying and you need to get rid of them, and I can understand his decision to do so. Unstable portal, here it is, I'm excited. Come on, yes, here we go, guys. Come on, what's it gonna be? Uh, he gets a free Illuminator. That's actually not horrible, because he is a mage. He does have the secret. It's not the most exciting Unstable Portal in the world, but it is actually genuinely useful. So I am kind of happy with that. He's just going to push the damage out, which does make sense. He ain't killing his Violet Teacher for a while. Azure Drake, probably just the best overall drop here. Finish off the Loot Hoarder. There's really nothing else to do on this turn. Having both SI7 agents is very useful for the future, especially when he's seeing weak minions like this being played by the mage fan of knives nice to see as well honestly because of fan of knives I'd have been tempted to just push the free damage through knowing that whatever happens I can just fan of knives and clear these kind of weak guys even novice engineer and a geomancer the geomancer I can kind of understand as maybe a Thalnos replacement but having the engineer who got nerfed ages ago into oblivion is Certainly interesting. Pyro is nice to see. Again, not ridiculously common, but appears enough that it's not like a whoa, but I'm still getting over this arcane explosion combo. Ragnaros, pretty damn good. One of the best legendaries in the game. You can't really go against that. Away goes the... Uh, Gnome using the weapon to do it. Very sensible. The Fun of Knives, of course, would have only been useful if there had been multiple two or less things used. And we see our second unstable portal. That makes me very happy. I hope we do actually get to see it played. Oh my god. Can we talk about this for just a second? Arcane Explosion, Mother Trucking Value. Right here, into the free Illuminator for the four health. That turn... That turn right there was simply magical. That was absolutely wonderful. The answer here is simple. Urban ring yourself for free, and then SI7, the Kobold, away. And you're just going to have to leave the Illuminator for now. And the thing is, you don't know about the Mirror Entity, so that maybe puts some cogs in your plan, but not many. You still kind of just have to deal with it. Technically speaking, well, no, he couldn't kill it because he lacks the spell power he once had. So, yeah, we're probably going to see an unstable portal here, followed by Arcane Intellect. And he gets a Gazrilla! <laughs> oh man, it really should say unstable random legendary because it really does feel like that a lot of the time. We see the other loot hoarder get drawn, which is a kind of a better use of two mana, but the mirror image has the advantage of protecting both of his guys and forcing the rogue into kind of annoying trades. I, I question why he traded with the mirror image option, honestly. It wasn't really that necessary. He's going to find knives just to weaken them for his weapon. That does make sense, just to cycle a little. The owner is definitely viable in this situation, but two free mana cards.
card to get rid of a single one mana card is not the best deal in the world. But again, mirror image is kind of that furious, just like, oh my god, mirror image type thing to see. And you don't always want it. We may actually see Gazrilla drop here, which is kind of fine. Because honestly, he has no way to get rid of it. He has no immediate answer for Gazrilla. And if Gazrilla gets to the Mage's turn again, it's basically over the sludge. A Belcher draw right there is just so good for El Nino Hero. He needed that because his only way out was a Ragnaros and a 50-50% chance of it hit. In fact, no, Ragnaros has got 9 health. What am I even talking about? Wouldn't have even done anything but buff it up to 12 damage. So, clearly, El Nino Hero, what he would have done is fireballed his own Gazrilla, followed by a ping to turn it into 24 damage for a smack. But now, he has to spend his mana on a Polymorph. He's, of course, going to ping his own Gazrilla. And the thing is, this 12 damage hit is a big deal, because guess what? 4 mana Fireball next turn, 10 mana Pyroblast, and he's kind of won the game. That unstable, balanced portal really doing a lot of work there. He's actually going to go for the YOLO rag. Honestly, he doesn't really have many other options, so I can understand that. Oh, El Nino hero. I hope so much for you that this rag hits Gazrilla. I really do. Oh, no. Oh, man. Oh, that is absolutely... Unreal. I'm, I'm gonna- wait, 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 no, 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 Lung, Young Link, wait! No! No! You could have buffed it up to so much damage! Oh, man. But yeah, obviously the season has literally restarted today or yesterday, I think, so our competitors are a lot lower ranked than their usual ability before you start calling me and oh yeah you're letting rank 15s in because i know what you guys are like so there it is guys in two ridiculous games uh, young link defeats el nino hero and moves uh, to the semi final it's exciting stuff it really is uh, let's move on to the recap so there we have it guys uh, young link moving forward to face uh, his opponent in the semi final not the semi final what am i even well it's kind of the semi final it's actually no it's technically the final e final honestly it's it's i've actually completely confused myself as to what actually is going on I don't even want to talk about it anymore. I feel like it's the NA final. I don't even know my own tournament that well. I am an absolute moron, but we had fun, so I guess that's all right. <laughs> oh, yes. Either way, congratulations to Young Link, and look forward to the next match. My name's been Rage, and like you've enjoyed this, it really does help, and I do appreciate it. And subscribe for more. A good boy.